What up guys, any tier, Guild Forever, says it right there. We are reviewing Inuyasha, the movie, uh, what the hell, there was something in my mouth. Anyway, yeah, we're watching the movie, forgot the whole title, but you'll see it in the title of this video. This will be counting as a movie night, while at the same time, an Inuyasha reaction video. Two birds with one stone. But yeah, overall, I will say this, the most appealing thing in this entire movie was the choreography and the animation was by far the most appealing. The animation was beautiful in this movie. How everything moved f from simple things like explosions, things being dissolved, movement of a character, even... The f Yo, the fight scenes were nice. That's gotta be my favorite part in the entire movie. And also, I will have to say this. Some of you guys may flag me for this or be like on the negative because I say this. But personally speaking, I find uh, Mino Minomaru, Minomaru, Hyomaru, however you say his name, the main villain, the moth. In my opinion, he's a way better villain than Naraku. I don't like Naraku for all the reasons you guys know. I'm not a fan of cowardly characters. This guy is a villain, and he's not afraid to get his hands dirty. Yes, he did use more uh, Kagome to take down Inuyasha, but that's because he's sealed inside that cocoon. He couldn't, he couldn't get out. I mean, he could, but that would interrupt his evolution process when he turned into a giant demon moth as we saw toward the end of the movie <laughs> but when he was able to he handled his business he has subordinates but he, for the most part he did things his way and he went out and got his hands dirty take freaking notes Naraku so yeah I love this villain way more than Naraku. I hate coward characters that hide in the shadows and never get their hands dirty. I just hate villains like that. For me, they're by far the most uninteresting and boring villains. And cow and villains it's not appealing to me. But overall, this was a good movie. Really good movie. Honestly, I will say this Shoshomaru did not need to be in this movie. He literally was just in the movie just to hold him relevance that his because because if it has to do with Inuyasha's father obviously the brother is going to be mentioned Inuyasha and Shishomaru they are both mentioned they are both uh Inuyasha's father's father well I don't know how you say his name again I think one of you guys told me I forgot but yeah if it involves Inuyasha's heritage, obviously Shishomaru is going to be involved. I wonder how pissed off he would be thinking like, Oh, your sword is not strong enough. Only the Tetsaiga is what matters. Uh, I feel like he, if that guy said it to Shishomaru right at his face, Shishomaru would make it a mission just to find him, waste him, and make him suffer. That would have been funny. If he actually told that to Shishomaru. But overall, the movie was really good. Story-wise, plot-wise, feels, moments, animation, villains. All this movie was overall great. Very good movie. Very, very good movie. And that says a lot, unlike most movies I've seen. Is it my number one favorite movie? Of course not. But it is definitely in the listings. If I were to rate this movie... Out of five stars, I'd give it a 4.5 or a 4.8. Reasons why is a lot of the huge core of this movie was rehashing a few things that we already know. Like who Kagome is, their backstory, a lot of flashbacks, a lot of the same material that goes on. And the at the end of the day... Kagome has to go back and forth between her era and the feudal era of Japan. 
and they always come down. The reason why it happens is because their little triangle trauma between Inuyasha, Kikyo, and herself. That is the reason why she always goes back and forth. And even though that's become a huge formula to the, to the series to where it's a natural thing, it's not necessarily... It's okay, but when you have it enough in the anime, you kind of want something different for the movie. Like, the movie was very different. But once again, for me, the strongest appeal was definitely the action. The action is what took it to a whole... No, the animation. The animation was what took it to a whole nother level of visual appeal. That's what I love the most about this movie. Even though some of the moments they had were touching, my favorite was Songos and Kilalas. By the way, guys, is it Kilala or Kirara? How do you really pronounce the, the cat's name? Demon cat. Even though, I don't know how the hell that cat is a demon. That cat is not a demon. That is an, an adorable little ball of fluff. That is not a demon. I don't care what you say. Still, um, over overall, like, like I said, I feel like Shishomaru and his group really didn't need to be there. They were kind of just there because, once again, Shishomaru's backstory is connected to Inuyasha. That's the only reason why he was in the movie. Other than that, he did not need to be there at all. <laughs> what else? I feel like a large part of the movie had too much backstory involved, which, in my opinion, the backstory that we should have seen most, that would have been by far the most intriguing, in my opinion, was the villain. The villain's backstory is absolutely necessary when it's its backstory that fueled his motives. The backstory in this movie of the movie of the villains would have been would have made this movie vastly superior. Excuse me, I burped. Sorry. <laughs> but yeah. Like, l let's be honest with you. Would you rather a lot of the minutes be consumed of backstory and material flashbacks that we already know from the original series, or would you rather see a backstory relating to our villain here? And if Shishomaru is going to be involved in this movie, he should have been really involved in this movie. Because a lot of the backstory connected to Inuyasha's father, which is also Shishomaru's father. Therefore, Shishomaru should have had a much bigger role in this movie. If you're, involve, if you're involve, involving that man, their father, both sons need to be in definite source prime driven plot point to this entire little story so yeah for me villain's backstory should have been more apparent if Shishomaru is going to be in this movie he should have had a bigger role too much flashbacks of material we've already seen I will have to admit though the, the way how they touched up on Kagome re rehashing what happened between her and Kikyo was kind of a nice little touch and sort of saying like it's a way to where this happened to you before but and it's happening again but unlike before it's not going to be your end hey that kind of rhymed hear me out here we go this happened before hold, hold on I I'm trying to remember I think I lost it for a second hold on hold on give me a minute This happened before. This happened before, but unlike before, this won't be your end. I don't think that rhymed. I don't know why in my head I thought that rhymed. Please ignore that. Please ignore my stupidity. Anyway, but yeah. Once again, those are the three plot points as I mentioned. That could have used more tweaking. If those were to have been executed better, 
this would have been a 5 out of 5. It's still a good movie. Don't get it twisted. I'm not saying it's bad. Remember, I rated it a 4.5 or 4.8 out of 5 stars. Because once I said before, the villain's origin would have been more apparent and more vital to this story. Shoshomaru, if he's involved, he should have had a bigger role. Too much prime material that we've seen already did not need to be in this movie and that consumed a huge chunk of the movie. It, I would say like a good 20 to 30 minutes between that and that's a lot. Now if it was like 10 to 15 minutes of rehashing source material for the sake of the beginning introduction of the movie, which they did, that is fine. That is just a measly 10 to 15 minutes. But a huge, like 20 to 30? You don't need that much for material that's already been shown. But once again, everything else just made the movie gravy. Most of the most of this movie was good. I loved I love as I addressed the things I loved, it was fantastic. Let's just go to questions. Okay, questions. Okay, here's a good here's a question for you guys. If there's one thing, one thing that bothered you about this movie, what would it be and let me know why? Question two. Who is a better villain to you? Naraku or Minomaru? The butterfly moth thing. Like, for you, who did you who do you prefer as a villain? To me, I personally like Minomaru better because he has a connection to Inuya well Naraku does have a connection to Inuyasha's past, but Mi Mino Minomaru has a connection to his past and in point to it involves his heritage. I feel like a villain involving his heritage would have been a much more story driven. Reasons why I say that because then it would allow us to learn more regarding his past. And right now we know almost z we know a little bit here and there about Inuyasha's past. But what really do we know regarding his father and his intentions like even so much as to how his mother and his father came to be all we know is they were in love they have a kid and between these two kids and mates were had swords regarding from their father but yeah other than that we don't know anything about the the guy himself so i feel like that would have been more vital a villain that had to a villain related to inuyasha's origin story relate to his family would have been a much more villain because then it would the story would have no other choice but to dip further into Inuyasha's backstory. Does that make sense? Because once again we we know his mother. We know about her, how she is, how she looks like. We don't even know how Inuyasha's dad looks like. Okay, all we know is he's a dog demon. Anyway, guys, uh, that's it for me. Don't forget to like, comment, sub if you haven't already. Really motivates me to put more content out there for you guys as my guildmates. And I'll see you guys all in the next video. Peace.